sapience, radiance, but in your relationship with, <laughs> good one's sake, but in your relationship with people, more importantly, more importantly, you release a vital energy that draws to you opportunities, employment, which you may not probably be looking for, but opportunities and a secure flow of substance. And Eileen, would you share your affirmation with all of us again? I have everything I need whenever I need it. There you go. I have everything I need whenever I need it. Okay. Well, there aren't many of us here, so let me uh, just take a moment and ask for prayer requests so we can hold these prayers for one another. Um, and just a reminder, you know, I'm doing a mastermind class on Tuesdays this month using the mastermind prayer process, which is actually one of the most powerful I've ever used. And the reason is because in the mastermind prayer group, and the optimum number is somewhere from six to eight, but two people can be a mastermind group. In the mastermind prayer, number one, we acknowledge a desire of our heart. So it's one thing to think of something that's important to us. It adds power to it when we speak it out loud. It adds even more power when we think it, speak it, and write it. So, it, so the mastermind has us acknowledge number one. And number two, we speak it into a circle of unconditional love and acceptance and non-judgment which the group is, that's what we agree to. And three, the people in that group, non-judgmentally non and unconditionally hold that prayer for each of us. And they also affirm it. So SIG has been on the board and we've done that mastermind a couple of times. And we just go around and everyone says, I know that God is responding to whatever your request is. And what that does for all of those who are praying is it, it builds our faith. And, you know, faith is the thing that does it. So that's mastermind. Anyway, in that regard, then, uh, Linda, what would you like us to hold in prayer for you? I'm sorry? Whatever you want us to hold in prayer. Um. All those that are dealing with the COVID virus. Okay, healing for COVID. Uh, Betty, what can we hold for you? Um, just, just the condition of the world today for peace, understanding, for love, um, just healing of the world today. Great. Judy, what can we hold for you? Um, lots of things. Um, I think we need to hold our president in prayer. Uh, he's doing the best he can. <laughs> and we, he needs our help. Great, Eileen. A special request for Gertie the cat for healing. For who? Gertie the cat. Gertie. <laughs> Your cat. No, my friend's cat. We don't have a cat anymore. Okay. Sig? My prayer is to return to sanity. Return to sanity? Mm-hmm. I mean, yes. you? The, the world. The world, our United States, especially. Because I know you're sane. Oh, I, I do hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. 
Kat? Um, before I tell you what I want to hold in prayer, I just want you to realize, because they're going to be down at the bottom of your list, that Alva and Joe have joined us. Oh, okay, great. And um, Reverend Leilani. Great. Uh, Arlene, what would you like us to hold in prayer for you? I'd like you to hold my daughter in prayer with her fight against depression and alcoholism. And what's her name, Arlene? Amy. Amy. Great. Uh, Alpha, what can I, uh, we all hold in prayer for you? I'm mute. I'm mute, Alva. Alva. I'm mute. Yeah, I know. There you Alva. go. Um, well, I pray that the virus finally lets up on the world and goes away, <laughs> uh, get a cure for it. And I hope our world, our country gets back to a, a rational mental state. We're all kind of on the same page, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Alva. Thank Joe, you. what can we hold for you in prayer? Unmute, Joe. Unmute. There we go. Yeah, I, I like Alva's. It's I I want our world to get back to normal and people where people care about each other and don't fight. Especially over politics. Just don't talk about it. Thank you. Nancy, what can we hold for you? Oh, there are quite a number of things, but the most important would be um, getting us all through the virus and um, making the world um, less hateful and divided. Great. What great prayer requests all of these are. And my, my prayer request is that people turn to spirit for help. So uh, let's take a moment then and let me affirm everyone's prayer. Who's that in there? It's Renee. Oh, Renee, okay. Hi, Renee. She can see you. <laughs> Hi. Uh, okay, here we go. So let's just uh, close our eyes again and let me let me just uh, affirm these very high level prayers. And we remember together that prayer is the most highly accelerated energy form, and that our prayers are non-local. They go up from us. The energy of what we're praying for goes out to do its perfect work. And so, God, we just give thanks right now that a cure is found for the virus, that we begin to see that the numbers who are infected drop dramatically, and those who are experiencing the virus are healed divinely ordered healing for all people affected by it right now. We give thanks that your spirit moves across the minds and hearts of people everywhere with divine ideas, with an enlightening thought about the importance of loving one another, helping one another, and unifying our country and our world. We give thanks that you are enlightening the mind of our president so that his decisions are helpful to all concerned to our country and the world. We give thanks that you are blessing and healing Arlene's daughter in every needed and desired way, that she be totally restored to a sense of peace and joy a sense of who she is in the mind and the heart of God. 
We give thanks that you are healing little Gertie, the cat, that your light and love for and in Gertie is ministering to her right now. And so we pray this knowing that Leilani Birch, as we pray for healing, she is experiencing the energy of our healing thoughts. That the light of God in Leilani is blessing and healing all that needs to be healed in her and divinely guiding her physician. And so, Lord, we are excited now to know that our prayers are manifesting great good. And so we go into our class with a sense of enthusiasm, peace, and joy. Amen. Amen. Hey. Are you staying or going? Yeah. You're staying? Oh, my goodness. Well, you probably need one of these. Yeah, right there. Okay, are y'all ready? You can all see that. So the first quote is from my book, which is what we're working on right now. Uh, to feel and be truly prosperous, we need to be fit on all three levels of our being. That is spirit, soul, and body. And Kathy and I were talking about body fitness earlier today, weren't we, Kathy? <clears throat> but any comments there? To feel truly prosperous when you think about it, it's important to be fit on all three levels. And the first level is to be spiritually fit. When we're spiritually fit, it positively affects our emotional state, our mental state, and the health and vitality of our body. Scientists have proved that. So any comments there? True. <laughs> Absolutely true. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, I have more questions. How do you become spiritually fit? Oh, I love that question, Linda. Can you repeat it? We well, my question is, how do you know if you're spiritually fit? How do you get to that Isn't that a great question? How do you know when you're spiritually fit and how do you get there? Uh, there are a, a number of ways. One is, I mean, maybe uh, I would start with this, to continually deepen our relationship with God, the God of our understanding. But in unity, we first of all have to come to believe in a God that's all good, that the God of our understanding lives in us, in everybody else, and is everywhere present. And that that God is always good, period, always good. That God is love, God is life. So when you think of God as love and life, that informs all of our relationships. It informs our relationship with our body, with our being, with our intelligence, with our emotions. It informs our relationship with all things, including money. And... Um, and everything in life is a relationship, everything. We have a relationship with everything, including our exercise equipment, right, Kev? <laughs> yes. I was going to say, and I think also for me, uh, it is trying daily to live the message of Jesus. Which is? Which is love. Which is love. Bottom line, bottom line. And so uh, let me go back to spiritually fit. So, you know, keep developing the relationship with God. The way to do that is to have a committed, regular prayer and meditation practice. Prayer is essential and meditation is too because they're twins. So prayer is making that connection like plugging into the wall so you can light the light. And meditation is basking in the light, which is listening for spirit. You know, what is what is the input? And even beyond the knowing exactly what the input is, whenever we pray and meditate, which is seeking an experience of God in a way, uh, something happens. And we may not be able to articulate it in the moment, but meditation, every minute in meditation 
is a blessing to our spirit, soul, and body. Uh, so prayer and meditation, uh, making, setting the intention and, and expressing it to be grateful, expressing gratitude and appreciation uh, is, is magical, is, is miraculous. So that gets us spiritually fit. Expressing all of those qualities we say God is, expressing love, uh, expressing life, um, expressing power in a positive way. So we're not wimps. You know what I'm saying? We Are we, Kathy? <laughs> yes, Betty. Um, could you give a similar description of uh, fit and, uh, and, and soul? In other words, spirit, soul, and body. So how would you explain being fit in your soul? Oh, so what the heck? that's a great question too, Betty. Excuse me? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, so the question was, how do you stay fit? How do you uh, bring your soul to fitness? Was that it, Betty? Did yeah, I, get it? I see. I didn't realize it was under number two. We'll get there. <laughs> Say that again. I said I didn't realize when I asked the question that you were going to be discussing that under number two. So I... I we're ready to get there. I'll wait till then. Oh, um, well, let me say a few words about soul. So we're all souls, right? Uh, we're, uh, we're a divine idea in the mind of God that has taken bodily form. And when the body goes, the soul goes on. As human beings, now th listen, remember my disclaimer. Everyone remember my disclaimer? I'm not the final authority. So take what you like and leave the rest. If it fits, if it resonates, you know, take it in. If it doesn't resonate, don't take it in. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> this is this is my understanding. That as a soul, we have, and if I'm talking too much, someone put up their hand right here, okay? Not <laughs> us. As a soul he, uh, taken on human form, I think first we come into the world as a soul with an eternity of experience. And so do I believe in reincarnation? Well, yeah. I mean, in the sense that I believe that our soul is eternal. And that, um, and that as a human being, when we were born, we, we had parents, we had experiences that impacted the energy of our soul. And I believe that's why we put such an emphasis on forgiveness and, and acknowledging, not running away from uh, any negativity that comes up in us or not denying it, but taking a look at it like under a microscope with great love and compassion and, and an attitude of forgiveness in, in that compassion. And uh, I think that's how we, that's how I clear my soul to experience more of the joy and peace and energy flow of God that is a part of every cell and atom of our being. There's no spot in, in you and I where God is not. And so uh, was that enough of an answer, Betty? Yes, I guess. Am I muted? No. Um, yeah, we'll keep keep going. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> I, I guess I find it different, uh, the difference between your spirit and your soul. So your soul is something that you, that is eternal and spirit is eternal. All right. So, and the soul, uh, I'm not sure how I, I want to articulate this. It's like, um, 
it's like Eric Butterworth. I think he was the first one who gave the example of um, we are a wave in the ocean of God. Right. Wave makes us the soul and being in the ocean of God makes us the spirit. Okay. Let me ask a question. So would the the spirit be basically what you're learning and the soul is what is holding that learning? Well, I think of it more as spirit being my divine identity in God. And the soul being um, not like this, not like spirit isn't, uh, but the soul is um, the wave that I am in the ocean of God. So every wave is different, right? Every wave is different. Ask any surfer. You know, some waves you catch and some waves you don't. Some waves just melt into nothingness and some waves are gigantic and, you know, you run the barrel. You all are gigantic waves that are fun to surf. Can we go on? Beautiful waves, waves, sculpted waves with white foam and iridescence. <laughs> okay, but let me get back to fitness and, and continue along that line. So spiritual fitness is having, I mean, you know, maybe the bottom line might be spiritual fitness is having a committed spiritual practice even showing up at church, for example, even though it's incredibly difficult right now for so many, uh, there's something about being in a community of prayer, like we are today, being in community that, that lifts everybody because we're all contributing our spiritual energy to one another. So it's, it's lifting. Uh, so the spiritual fitness is keeping a constant contact. So the more I notice the good around me and acknowledge God, thank you, God, uh, the better I feel, you know, the healthier I feel. Uh, the more I um, reach out in love, the better I feel. The more I am quick to forgive, the better I feel. Uh, was that enough? Yeah. Well, what else, Linda? This is something that needs to be talked on. Say that again? It's something that I need to reflect on. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. Uh, it is um, I'm so tempted to talk about toning right now, so I think I will. Every morning, one of my practices is to tone sacred sound. I do it on the way to work. But I, I've started doing a little bit of, at home this week. Uh, but the sounds of A-E-I-O-U. If you look at the words for God in all spiritual faiths, Allah, Allah, Buddha, Ra, God, they all have that ah sound. Alleluia gives me chills to even talk. Mm. Alleluia has all those sounds, A E I O U. And so I tone those sounds every morning as a spiritual fitness practice to calibrate the energies of my body in the hope and belief that I'll show up for people and myself in good form, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm fun to be around, right, Kaz? <laughs> so yeah, it does, I mean, it might take some reflection, uh, but you know, I've been working on it for a long time, yeah. 
and I'm always like Charles Fillmore said, I'm always open to something new that would be helpful. I'm always open. In fact, right now I've been, I've, I've been thinking, God, who, who do I want to hear more of or from? Who do I want to hear more from? So uh, shall we move on? Yes. All right, then. The next one is uh, from Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now. To offer no resistance to life is to be in a state of grace, ease, and lightness. That's spiritual fitness, too. I have to remember that every time I get in the car. Do not resist the people in the left lane going five miles an hour. <laughs> Any comments on that one, though? To offer no resistance to life, even to the political climate that we're experiencing right now to offer no resistance to it which is so hard it's so hard isn't it not to get into <laughs> those discussions or uh, to offer no resistance as, as much as we might say something is diminishing to the life force and that's putting it in a positive way you know what i'm saying uh in order, I mean, when I think about uh, the violence out there, uh, to not resist it in the sense of, I'm gonna talk about this until I'm blue in the face and see how many people I can get to agree with me, ain't it awful? I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna offer non-resistance and, and look instead at what needs to be done here. What is gonna heal this? But you're not ignoring it. Not ignoring it. Not denying it, in fact. But looking for what would help here, rather than continuing the negativity by resisting it. Ain't it awful? That's a tough one. But it, but it's true and it works. Any comments out there? Are you all awake? I was going to say that um, that's a classic example of going with the flow and being in the moment yeah. because each moment has a lesson for us and whether we want to cover our eyes or open them up and l allow what's coming in to be part of our lesson and then learning what to do to make that a positive impact on all of us. Um, yeah. That is a challenge, but we can do it. Thank you for that. It reminds me of Gary Simmons' book. Do, are any of you familiar with Gary Simmons' book? Um, what's the, the The Eye of the Storm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he uh, he's a Unity minister and a uh, a martial arts master, a black belt. And you know everything about the martial arts is non-resistance. And so he, he, when he does his classes and in the book you will read, to adopt the, the goal, a, a goal is to adopt the mindset that no one and nothing is against me. Mm -hmm. No one and nothing is against me. With that mindset, it's like uh, Eileen was just saying, we use it to grow. When something happens that hurts us, bothers us, upsets us, angers us, we take a look and see, how can I use this to grow? First and foremost, we have to jump into forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but then, you know, look for how, how can this help me grow? Uh, any other comments on Eckhart Tolle's quote? Yes, Renee? I think for me, um... Personally, Speak loud because uh, they want to hear you. For me personally, I, I know that like, I'm spiritually aligned um, when I'm at peace. So, you know, I know that my body, mind, soul, spirit, we're all kind of together. And there's no resistance to life for me. It's, um, it's like really praying to see the big picture yes. and not being a victim. But, you know, I, I call it my pause button, if I can step back and just kind of look down and really ask Holy Spirit, Jesus, whatever your prayer, to 
just see this differently or see it above the battleground mm -hmm. because there is a big picture. Yeah. Um, you know, when people are protesting whatever, I, I don't know what is really the big picture. So I just kind of, I'm at peace with it. Let it be what it is. And um, that gives me peace. And then I know, and when that, I'm not at peace, then I have to go with that pause button. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. And then pray, uh, what, what, what's the lesson here? What am I not hearing? Um, it's 24-7. It, it is, isn't it? <laughs> Did you all hear Renee? Could you hear her? Oh, good. Oh, good, because I couldn't repeat it. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I know. Are we ready to move on? Key ideas? Okay, let's take a look. Spiritual fitness, number one, spiritual fitness makes us resilient to what washes up on the shores of our lives. That's the way, and that, that follows exactly what you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. What you were yeah. saying, Renee. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, you don't take it personally. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. That's also in the, is it the five agreements or the? Four agreements. Four agreements. I got it. One more. The right. four agreements. Right. And it, yeah. the one you're talking about is? Oh, the, not to take anything personally. Right. Don't take anything personally. Yeah. But it's paradoxical, isn't it? Think about it. We have to take everything personally in that, how is this coaching me right now? Right. Yeah. Looking at the lesson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else on number one, gang? My brilliant prayer partners here? No. Okay, number two. The I don't want number one. Go ahead, Alva. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go back to number one. I just didn't get my mic off real quick. Uh, it may be a little out of context, but I, you know, I know it's a metaphor about the washing on shores, but uh, there's a movie called The Castaway that really helps me in life sometime if you've seen it with tom hanks uh he's trapped on an island and he's uh, but he says in there when he finally gets off the island and gets back to the civilization he says you know i had no absolutely no control he was a very uh controlling person before but n n he said on that island i had absolutely no control over nothing he said but i learned something every day will be a new day. The sun will rise and you never know what the tide will bring. Mm -hmm. Meaning, so I, that's the way I read it. You know, the resistance, it may be, for him, it was something good that helped him get over that reef. But in life, it may be something, an object, a, an obstacle. So, but he, he had uh, the belief that he, he, he'd try to survive. And, and I've used it myself, uh, like I said, I, I come from a background of alcoholism, drugs, wars, other things that were hardships. And uh, I'm kind of like that island. You know, once he got off of there, he uh, was in open ocean. And, and, and now you've got a lot of other things, sharks, you know, uh, storms. But, and that's the way my life's been. When I, when I gave up drinking, I always felt that, well, I, I'll go hide in my bar, my, my place. But I, I wouldn't think about standing up to something. But finally, uh, I finally found my, well, he you know, it was a piece of a porta potty, what he found, washed the shore. But it was enough to make a sail and, and, and get over that reef that almost killed him once. Right. And, and so for me, my island was that uh, being trapped with drugs and alcohol and, and, and finally finding something to, to get you back and and uh, standing up to it you know the belief thanks elva i think we've all at some point in our lives been on an island right in that way that he's referring to yeah uh, yeah thanks for that elva. the thing was even though he left the island he, he was sad and, and when i left because that's all i was used to right what it right. meant to me he he, he kind of he wanted to leave but he, he was sad and that's where I was. I, I didn't know what to do. How am I going to live without drinking? Or I got to face the open ocean. That's right. That's, I, that's, why, that's why I wound up in, in, in Unity. Is it, it was a way my friend helped me to find a different path 
uh, and belief because mine had been structured around a, a very dogmatic uh, and, and unity really opened my way. That was my my uh, sale. <laughs> got me. Oh, got, what a beautiful way to put oh, it. Yeah. Got beautiful me home. Way to put it. <laughs> beautiful way to put it. Thank I you. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, then. Number two. The soul thrives in optimism and generosity and shrivels in pessimism and parsimoniousness. Parsimoniousness. Woo! What do you think about that? Uh, this is Eileen. I was going to mention um, earlier, but it also is uh, pertinent here, is that I heard the soul once compared to the body's computer. And that everything that's given into your soul um, either feeds it or shrivels it. So like garbage in, garbage out, good data in, good data out. And so it holds those things that we put there and helps us to um, base our day with a great outlook and good um, opportunity and um, also, I heard say that the soul only hears the positive statements anyway. So if you said the statement, I don't want to be sick, all it hears is I want to be sick. So instead of saying I don't want something, we need to say the positive statement of it. I am well, I am healthy, I am strong. Excellent. Thank you. I like that metaphor a lot, the computer data in, data out. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Uh, you know, pessimism. Loud and clear. Pessimism, I see as as just denying true reality. It's sort of you know getting in the shadow and just denying our true reality. So of course it distracts us from life. Yeah. You know, a lot true. of no energy. And then optimism is actually being aligned with truth. Of yeah. Who you really are. Yes. Great. Great. It's true. Harmoniousness. Don't you love that word? <laughs> yeah. Parsimoniousness. Yeah. Which? Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. If you call someone parsimonious, they might think you're giving them a compliment, but <laughs> it might not be considering. <laughs> it's not. It's it's, uh, it's being. Um, it's having a stingy mindset. What a pretty word. <laughs> Isn't it though? I know. I love that word. Parsimoniousness. Yeah. Yeah, stinginess of spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments on number two? I was going to say I, I have two uh, two things that I use a lot, and uh, one is cancel, 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 which goes with with the computer thing. But the other one is I like to say this ain't nothing but a thing. So when something happens, I just say, this ain't nothing but a thing. It reminds me that there's a bigger picture. Great. Yeah. Great. Uh, and that reminds me of what I, what I learned when I was early in unity. And it made all the difference in the world to me then. And it was, I have thoughts, but I am not my thoughts. I have emotions, but I am not my emotions. I'm way more than that. It's kind of like it's it ain't nothing but a thing. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I'm way more than that, whatever that is. Anybody else on two? No, Judy. What's happening, Judy? What's happening? Um, oh. I've had something running around in my mind ever since you made that first statement about the master class um, uh, about thinking it and speaking it and writing it. Uh, I had that in my face this morning and you were just a, another synchronistic affirmation for me oh. to get on with what I need to do. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, number three. 
The more we disagree with our adversary, the bigger and more looming our adversary becomes. Jesus said, agree with your adversary quickly. What do you think about that? And guess what COVID is? Adversary. Can I comment? Yeah, whatever you feed energy to, it's going to grow. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's yeah. right. And you're yeah. going to make it real. It's going to take you over. I have heard this one uh, culture, uh, indigenous culture, and they, I think it was American Indian. You can you, you can complain about something three times and then don't discuss it. You can't talk about it anymore. <laughs> That's it. Three, you get three chances. <laughs> oh. oh, that's great. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I'm not hearing it anymore. <laughs> so, it's true. <laughs> the I don't. More... What? Oh, all right. I I'm kind of baffled about uh maybe you could explain the part where it says jesus says uh, or is it at uh to agree with your abs quickly now what comes to mind to me is i'm going to use an example uh when you're a kid uh, uh, the bully comes up to you blah 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 so oh i, I agree with you it, it makes me think like you're giving in or what what is it explain it no I'm not clear what it sounds like being. Yeah, let me say a few more words about it. Agree huh? with your adversary is not condoning what isn't what's unacceptable behavior or what isn't the truth. It's not condoning it. It's not agreeing with it. Like, yes, I agree with you. Oh, yeah, that's right. No, it is. It's a form of non-resistance. So if you fight whenever if you fight alcoholism, Oh, I'm not going to drink tomorrow. Oh, I'm not going to drug tomorrow. If you're fighting it, boy, I hate this. I wish I wasn't. Uh, that's going to get you more, more trouble, more bad energy. But if you say, aha, I see I'm an alcoholic and drug addict right now. What am I going to do about it? Or I see that I am feeding an argument right now. What am I going to do about that? Or I see that I am um, um, disagreeing and hating the COVID virus, which is perfectly normal and natural reaction to it. I see that I'm I'm talking about it and making it so wrong and blah, all kinds of negative. Rather than saying, I see there is an infection here going around. How am I going to keep myself healthy? So I'm not contributing to it. Mm -hmm. That's a far different perspective than standing on the circle of perspective and fighting it, hating mm -hmm. it, and fearing it. Engaging it. Engaging it. Good word, engaging it. Yeah. Yeah. So we see we don't deny it and we don't engage in it, connect with it. I don't, I don't own it. So it kind of goes back to that. It's, it's better sometimes, even with an individual, just walk away. Yeah. Don't, don't argue. I see it now where you're making it, or it be it a person or a alcohol, or you're just making it bigger by trying to, yeah, I used to say, nah, I ain't, I'm giving it up. I ain't doing it no more. Yeah, I, that afternoon I'm doing it again. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You're acknowledging it. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same with gossip. Mm -hmm. Gossip. Reverend Shad. Yes, Betty. I just, um, I might have mentioned this at some other time, but it, it, it stands me in good stead. But it's worth repeating. Um, when, I, when we're in a discussion group and somebody says something that you don't agree with, rather than saying, but you're wrong or but no whatever we i say on the other hand which gives respect to what he has the op, has the uh, option to say what he wants to say but on the other hand i have something to say too so it's kind of a nice way to make a transition rather than it to be aggressive well it, it, it is agreeing quickly mm -hmm. with your adversary when you do that mm -hmm. you're not making them wrong right 
you're just acknowledging your own perspective. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, anything else on number three? I think the debates were a wonderful example of this. Yes. <laughs> it, it, the debates were certainly a wonderful example mm -hmm. of disagreeing with your adversary. <laughs> yeah, with the new rules. Um, but let me go back to gossip for a minute, um, because whenever we participate in a conversation that makes somebody wrong, we are disagreeing with our adversary. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. I'm making someone else my adversary, but I'm not seeking to heal it. I'm complaining and fighting it. Mm -hmm. So you're like you're judging it. Judging it, I'm making it wrong. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, there's no solution in that. Yeah. yeah. There's no spirit in that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, number four. Without prayer, the spiritual leap to using resistance to sculpt a life that is rich and meaningful is too difficult for most of us. Would you say it was impossible for most of us? <laughs> uh, we'll say more about that, Renee. Well, I, I mean, without, loud and clear. Loud without and clear. prayer, I mean, with, without you know, getting getting the information from source. Um, we, we, we just run in circles. We, we don't come out clean. We're, we're just constantly just, you know, changing the scenery, but <laughs> the story is still the same. <laughs> we just move the chairs around, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the way I see it. Thank you. Yeah. It is a spiritual leap to use resistance, to use it to sculpt a life that is rich and meaningful without prayer, without that spiritual connection. So every morning as a part of my spiritual practice, I journal after I've said my prayers and meditated. And part of my meditation is always a, a 12 power meditation. After I do that, I have a journal and I always ask spirit. I like to write it out. I have found that works for me. I write out my questions and I had a question about something. Uh, well, I always have specific questions it, it, and they relate to spirit. How do you want me to handle this situation? In other words, I don't want to be in my ego and any of my judgment about it. I want the divine inspiration, what would spirit do? I could ask, what would you do? Spirit, what would what would spirit do about this? Or spirit, what would you have me do about it? Rather than saying, please do it for me. Yeah. <laughs> I want it my day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any comments about number four, y'all? Nope. Okay then. Let's go to the questions then. Share what you do or don't do to nurture all aspects of your being. So this goes along with Linda's first question here and pretty much what we've been talking about so far. But you know, so that we all might get inspired, uh, would you share what you do to nurture all aspects of your being? Thank you, Eileen. <laughs> um, I think I already mentioned this last week, but I like putting on really um, beautiful music that lifts my spirit. Mm -hmm. And then I like singing with it, which goes right along with your toning, because that reverberation of that tone within your soul just lifts you right up. And if you're in joy, expressing that from within it there's just nothing like it thank you great what a great idea mm -hmm. <clears throat> who else okay uh, renee okay i i um 
I study um, A Course in Miracles. I do I study a lesson a day, and I read, I'm reading A Course of Love, and I meditate, try to meditate twice a day. Um, I listen to channeled works. I'm very attached, uh, attracted to channeled work. Um, well, and I try to eat right. Yeah. Uh, that's very important. Um, and I pay attention to my body, what it's saying. And, um, and I, I watch my thoughts. And if I have a negative thought, I, I, I work right away to turn it around or to just send, see myself as a loving soul sending that love out. Great. Um, so it's a lot of visualization yeah. and, and, and prayer is it's constant, you know, connection with spirit. And when I don't have it, it's, it's pretty dark. And I, 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 I step back and I say, okay, <laughs> what am I not wanting to hear? Ah. Um, so it's, it's a constant, um, uh, practice. It's all day long. It's a constant practice, isn't it? Yeah. But it's a joy. Yes, it is, because it feels so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It feels so good. Yeah, then it's not work. It's really not work. Yeah. I used to think it was. When I first came into Unity, uh, I, can I can remember exactly where I was in my condominium. I can remember exactly walking through the hall. I had been listening to a Louise Hay tape on You Can Heal Your Life, mm -hmm. and I had her book. And I'm looking in there because she, you know, she shows all part, all manner of um, illness and something wrong with the body, and equates it to a spiritual need. So anyway, I'm reading her book, listening to her tape, and um, and I was in the process of a. Uh, I had left my husband at the time, and that was hard enough. And then I, I was walking down the hall. I'm going, God. When is this going to get better? I just, this is too much. Make me, make me better now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those, those negative thoughts, I just, I wanted to be done with them. You know, I wanted to be done with the fear, I wanted to be done with the worry. And it was a lot of work. But the good news is we keep climbing the ladder of peace and joy. There is no spiritual effort that doesn't have a positive impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you were saying, the constant work. And that's your comfort zone. Yeah. So you're used to it. And so when you're off, you, it's, you know, then it's work. But then you get back there and, and life is good. Life is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, who else on that one? Number one, anyone want to share? Eileen shared, Renee shared. Yes, Darlene. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, almost 98% of the stuff that I read is, is spiritual stuff. And it may be things that I already have gone over with and, and thought about, but I like to have that kind of thinking going on. And Forrest and I do a lot of reading together and discussing. Hang on, uh, hang, hang on. Kathy, Kathy, there is something going on in the equipment right here that sounds like something unraveling. I'll be right there. What'd you say? Be right there, Helen. Give issues. Help is coming. Help is on the way. Yes. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Darlene. That's okay. I didn't want to lose what you were saying. But, but far as that I do have some differences of opinion on some of the things that we read and it's really good because we can we can bounce off of each other because there are some things i mean i'm hoping to learn new sure. things too and so is he so, yeah 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 let's pause for a moment because kathy and mackie are in here yeah, trying to that's what i'm trying not to print out oh is that what it is oh, you cannot get it right right, right. right. So, yeah yeah or it's just a different way of looking at it you know, yeah. it could be the same belief, but a different way of looking. Um, but like Joe has a great mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, we, so, have the, we have the surgeon here right now. <laughs> yeah, but now that he showed up, it stopped
Yeah, of course, that's what yeah. happens. Yeah, when you're in the doctor's office, nothing's not hurt anymore. <laughs> it was just turning itself on. I don't know why that took too long. Get it, Becky? No, that one. Oh, okay. There's always a way. That was the adversary to say thank you. I know that we're having trouble, but we're fixing it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you guys. What do you need, Mackie? Which one? Which one is it? Pull, pull. I got it. Thank you. Problem solved. Thank you. Peace at last. Joe, what were you going to say? Joe? Joe Kennedy? Yes. What I was going to say is I always try to stay in the now and I love music and dancing also. <laughs> I understand that totally. It really brings me up and I have a lot of magazines and stuff that I read to to make my spirit soar and it's you know that's staying in the now is the main thing I think that's great staying in the now it's it's key isn't it I mean it's yes essential when I'm coaching uh people you can hear when they're out of the now right whenever they start anything that's worried about the future or whenever we start talking about the past and how it impacts the now moment, you've gone into monkey mind. Mm -hmm. Monkey mind is here and now. And I mean, monkey mind is not here and now. It's something else. And that's where the triggers are, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Joe. Anybody else on number one? We're still there, but we're moving on. Okay, then. Number two is what makes your life flavorful? <gasps> I thought groups like you this mean, make my life flavorful. Yes. What makes you, what? I said groups like this, oh. to share ideas. Yes. yes. Great. Different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And starting off the week, coming to unity. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yeah, just, and, and my walks in the morning when I talk to God. I mean, you know, that's beautiful. Yes, I hear you. Yes. Who else? What makes your life flavorful? Me, Betty. Betty. Um, they're using up uh, all my answers there. I agree with all of those things. Uh, and it used to be a lot of different flavors when we didn't have to be confined the way we are. So we're, <laughs> so we're substituting new flavors now. And thank goodness for Zoom, because I, I Zoom with the Unity programs that we have here. There's one that's put on by the uh, Arizona Faith uh, Network that specializes in topics on social justice. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really good because I feel these people are doing something, you know, it's, we're not all just talking about that, oh, there's a big problem. We're trying to see, see, see ways to solve that problem. And um, I, I'm taking a course now with Jan Phillips. Are you familiar with Jan Phillips? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, she's doing something now called the rise of spiritual intelligence. And um, so that looks at spirituality and all things from a, a different angle. And then, of course, I have my Zoom with my friends. Um, we discuss the books and authors that we're discussing here and also family, you know, some some place where you can talk about that you're worried about the granddaughter or your, your nephew just uh, graduated from college or something, those personal things that you really like to share and we haven't been able to because of our lack of social contact. So I think uh, we have uh, a lot of different flavors if, if we take advantage of, of Zoom and and I think it's, I'm thankful love for it. technology. Thank you. Yeah. Your life is very flavorful, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? What? What makes your life flavorful? Delicious, yummy, rather than yucky. This is Kathy. Um, yes. I'll give you the obvious answer. My pets, your pets, everybody's pets. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kath. Who else? Arlene, what makes your life flavorful, Arlene? Right now, not too much, actually. I'm just so 
thankful that I can come to Zoom and see all your people and hear all your good things. That's good. It's a, it's a great step. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, did I see Judy's this hand up? This and then Judy. you, Joe, right? Judy, what okay. makes your life flavorful? Did you? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, uh, what, what's flavorful here is Eileen's cooking. <laughs> she has been making so many good things lately. Uh, it, it's her God force. <laughs> She's made the most delicious quiches and the most delicious chilies. And she share, she makes huge pots and shares them, shares them with all the neighbors. So uh, oh. it's been very flavorful in the neighborhood lately. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Is there an address? Is there an address? <laughs> Darlene wants to know where, <laughs> where you live. Chandler, Chandler, Arizona. It's about an hour away. So. Get on your skate. Uh, Joe, what makes your life flavorful? Um, my friends, I talk to people all the time. Um, my friend Bobby across the, uh, the way, I, I make delicious meals and bring her stuff and Aww. yeah, Thank it's you, nice. Dad. I'm learning a lot about cooking, <laughs> <laughs> which I had forgotten over time. <laughs> Thank you. Who haven't I heard from? Want to hear I from? Good and plenties. Pardon? Good and plenties make my life late. Good and is it for real? Good and plenty? Yes, that's a candy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wake up, Lance. I remember <laughs> those. <laughs> oh, I didn't tell you. Uh, for me, it's, it's like minded souls, my yeah. friends. And yeah. um, cooking, I, I just I just got really excited about the air fryer. <laughs> <laughs> and as I'm getting a new one, and, uh, yeah, trying new things, new recipes. Oh, great. Uh, cooking, it's Creative. Yes, it is very creative. Some things end up in the garbage, <laughs> but you know, yeah, cooking it, it's it's fun. Oh, and I well, I can add to that because yeah. I hate cooking. Excuse me, I'm sorry, but I hate <laughs> it. But I love cleaning and organizing. So that uh, it gives me such joy to to organize things and to clean things. Any things neat. I mean, it just makes you happy. I would love it. I would love to be a roommate. <laughs> as long as you cook. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, Linda, what makes your life flavorful? I think uh, a lot of the things that have been mentioned, also being able to be outdoors and to look at the trees and the flowers mm -hmm. and the birds and the different yeah. animals. Yeah. Thank you. And let's see, who haven't we heard from? Eileen, did I hear from you? What makes your life flavorful? Um, spice. In other words, um, something different that isn't the same old mundane thing over and over and over. A little bit of variety and um, learning new things. So that it doesn't become boring and a drudge. <laughs> Even your energy went down when you said that. Boring. Yeah. <laughs> I know that was a bad word. <laughs> no, it wasn't a bad word, but I mean, you could, you know, every word has energy. Right. right? You're absolutely right. Yeah. And boring as well. <laughs> uh, let's see. We haven't heard from you. What makes my life flavorful? Well, many things, but what comes to my mind first and foremost is dancing. I love to dance. When I'm dancing, I'm uh, ecstatic. Uh, I go into ecstasy. I'm blissed out. <laughs> yeah, um, my kids make my life flavorful and some of it has been a little bitter. <laughs> If you know what I mean. All flavors. All flavors. All flavors. All flavors. But mostly, mostly they have made my life uh, delicious. Mm -hmm. And my grandchildren have made my life delicious. Mm -hmm. And doing this work makes my life delicious. Mm -hmm. Yum, yum. 
It's the only way to go. Yum, yum. Sig has her hand up and Nancy hasn't responded yet. Who else had their hand up, Kath? Sig did. Oh, Sig. And then Nancy. Sig, where uh, are you, Sig? There, there you are. Sig. Yeah. Am I unmuted? Yes. What? Now you're muted again. I can't see it very well. So, um, yeah, what helps put flavor in my world is I get to communicate with my oldest daughter who lives up in Portland. And, and every Sunday uh, we, we do FaceTime and she looks up recipes for me to do in my Instant Pot. Oh, and so, and sometimes she orders groceries for me and, and, and she sends me recipes and we, we do it together. And she sits, I, I set the uh, tablet out there so she can see me while I'm cooking. And sometimes I take the tablet and point it down at the pot so she can see what's inside <laughs> of it. <laughs> oh, it kind cool. of put, puts a joy in my life. <laughs> Cause very I don't, I, in the past I have not heard from her. Sometimes maybe uh, once every three months I'll get a call from her. But, but so far it's been pretty good. Uh, I get every Sunday now. Great. Wonderful. Good. This is, yeah. That was interesting. So Sig just gave us an example of how COVID is a blessing. That's right. <laughs> um, COVID, what Sig said, since she, it brought her and her daughter closer, COVID did. Great, great. Thanks, Kath, for that. This I is have. Nancy. And uh, my life is made more flavorful by my uh, interactions with my dogs, uh, wow. my son and my daughter. And then I've been uh, in contact with my old classmates that I graduated from high school with. Oh my uh, we've, God. we've all remained very close. We had our reunion a year ago. And so um, we have a, a lot of contact going on between you know, among the members of the class. And then. Oh, you just went off. Unmute yourself again, Nancy. Sorry. There you go. Um. Yeah. Oops, we lost you again. It's muted. You're muted again. <laughs> I had a telephone call come through. I'm sorry. Um, and um, just sitting out in the evenings with uh, my son's dog, uh, providing the coyotes who don't decide to visit the neighborhood. Um, oh. And I've got to I've got to learn how to be grateful for the coyotes because they chase us inside. I I don't feel comfortable being out with them, but they are beautiful animals. So, <laughs> and they have their space here as well as I do. So, thank great. You. Great attitude. Thanks, Nancy. Uh huh. Who else? Alva, have you shared what makes your life flavorful? No. Um, well, one, uh, I do it a little bit with COVID going on, but uh, I like to take my convertible, put the top down, and just take off out to the country. And I enjoy that. And then uh, a while ago, you mentioned something about the the dancing and, and, and your life, ecstasy. I, I love to do theater. We're not doing a lot right now because uh, the COVID. But uh, in theater, when you become a character and you really are into character, you become obsessed or what, what is the word? Uh, you know, swallowed by the character. You, you, you lose touch with who you really are and you become. That's when you're acting. You're not, you know, you're, you're in full bloom. And that's yep. that. It gives me pleasure because it's so real afterwards, you know, people thanking you and, and really enjoyed the, you know, that they, the believability and that, that, that gives me, play, play, you know, flavorable or joy is to see how well I can, I can do this actor. And it's, sometimes it's scary because you lose touch with reality, but people think, no, nah, I ain't going to do that because I'm scared I'll lose reality, <laughs> but I know. <laughs> You just, you're just so in enmeshed, like you said, ecstasy, so enmeshed into the character, like a book. If you're reading a book, you, you, you literally go to uh, Sherwood Forest with Robin Hood. You're really there. You're not, you're not where you're at, you know, 
And it's the same thing with acting. In your mind, if you rehearse so much, you become emished and, uh, you know, and, and uh, absorbed by the, the, the character that you, you are, the, you are that person. And, and so in the moment, right? So in the moment, yeah. And uh, one thing I was going to add here, when I do theater, it's one thing I always do before all the rehearsals and everything, and, I, and I'm scared. No, I've done I've done thirty some odd productions, but each one I'm scared because you got a big audience out there, and there's always that fear. But I always talk to my higher power, and I say, please God, you know, grant me the ability to go out there and do the best I can, because these people have taken time to come here and see me, and all of us, and uh, you know, I want to do the best I can for them. So, and that helps. It, it helps a lot, you know, that, that uh, because of that way you feel like you're, you're trying to do something to make people enjoy or get people to enjoy something. Yeah, I mean, you give them the gift of your work. Yeah, yeah, just like if you're an architect, you would want them to really love the what you, you're building. Yeah, you know, same thing. You're right, yeah. Thank you. Have we covered everyone and flavorful stuff? Okay, let's take a quick look at number three. Reflect for a moment on a person's situation or circumstance that you fought, that you resisted. What was the outcome and what happened to your energy? So what I'm looking for here is um, what you learned. This is Eileen. Um, Eileen. Right before I retired, our school district did a conversion from about 50% Macintosh to all uh, personal computer products. And since I'm such a Mac fan, I just resisted it to the max. I just hated it. I didn't want to go to work. Uh -huh. I didn't want to do anything. It's like, give me my Macintosh, I'm out of here. So, so finally, after all of that time, all I did is create myself sick. I just, you know, it was just negative energy every day, complaining. It was just not my normal person. So um, I finally realized, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. So learn what you need to do and do the job you need to do and be happy with the people you need to spend time with. And um, when I finally did that, then I was happy and then I retired. <laughs> <laughs> She's <laughs> so the lesson was, you know, go go with the flow, do the things that you need to do, and then um, realize that that was a lesson for you. It was in your face for a reason. And so when I finally did that, then I could um, be happy again and not and let Beautiful. it go and, and not be sick. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Who else? Something that you fought and what you learned when you realized you were fighting it and decided not to. Darlene. Well, I will say for me, uh, growing up, I always had a very contentious uh, relationship with my mother. Um, and it colored a lot of the decisions I made in my life. Mm -hmm. And um, I took things personally that she did to me. Uh, or I felt that she did to me, um, which caused me a lot of um, negative thinking about myself and negative thinking about her uh, to the point that I made a decision when I was very, very young that I would never have children because I didn't want anyone to feel about me the way I felt about my wow. mother. Wow. Um, but uh, going through my father's illness before he passed away, I finally got it that, um, you know, my mother is a very loving person, but she's a very close person uh, to personal relationships, I think, um, not everybody else. But I realized that maybe she didn't have the, um, the motherly instinct, or she never learned it, she never had it, 
you know, herself. So right. she couldn't give it to me. But once I realized that, I was able to say, oh, she didn't do this to me personally. It's just her. So I was able to let go of that. And um, our relationship has been a lot better. Great. Of course, we're not still in a mother-daughter. We're more friends, you know, than anything else. Yeah. But it, it uh, freed me up. Exactly. And um, I was able to forgive her and then forgive myself. Also. Yes. Yes. We always need to forgive ourselves right. in these situations. Mm -hmm. Forgive me for my, a lot, the Course in Miracles said this a lot. Forgive me for perceiving this as I did incorrectly. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Who else? La, la. Love. No one else. All right, then we're going to number four. What is what is your experience of accepting what is what is as opposed to resisting it? What is your experience of accepting what is rather than opposing it? Peace. Peace. Who said that, darling? <laughs> and a lot more energy because you're not putting so much energy into all that negative. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, I was married to a man who was always angry, always angry. And I fought it. I fought it. I fought it. I thought, if, let me just tra change this and maybe he won't get angry. You can imagine how that didn't work. Yes. Mm -hmm. And was so amazing to me when I finally came, and I worked on this, I finally came to accept he's angry. Mm -hmm. He's just angry. Um, it helped me see that I had some unexpressed anger. And that set me free. Mm -hmm. And that set me free. So you know, life is a mirror, mm -hmm. always trying to teach us something. I think we're done here, aren't we? I just Are we done to, here? I wanted to wake, make uh, one other comment, and I made this a long time ago, is when you want to comb your hair, you can't reach out in the mirror to comb it. You've got to bring the comb back to your hair and comb it there. So right. as soon as you accept what's there and bring it back to you, then um, you learn the lesson. And what we say, thanks Eileen, what, uh, what we say in 12 step programs is, I keep the my side of the street clean. I don't try to clean up anybody else's side of the street. In other words, I, I, I'm not fighting them and what mm -hmm. is, trying to get them to change. Mm -hmm. Can't make someone change. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, how was this for all of you? Very enlightening, stimulating. Enlightening, stimulating. I would agree very much so. Great, great, great. Well, this is the last one in this series of uh, classes. Next week, I start the Adventures in Resilience using the book, <coughs> Adventures in Resilience. Uh, so it will be same time, same place, Wednesdays, 1030. But I want to thank all of you for being here today. You made it flavorful. <laughs> can, I Delicious. One, can I make one comment? Um, since we all got to, to explore mastermind prayer um, this morning, just want to remind you, we do have that mastermind prayer meeting or group meeting on Tuesday mornings and we have room. So if any one of you want to, or if all of you um, want to join, um, just let me know and I'll, I'll set you up with the link. Great, thanks Kath. Uh, anyone else want to announce anything? Uh, I just want to say how wonderful this is to be in person. Mm -hmm. um, it's such a joy, talk about flavorful. <laughs> you feel it, you know, I, I, it's 
kind of cold. I mean, I'm grateful for Zoom. Yeah. But this is wonderful. Oh, great. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Uh, and Renee does, has been doing all this time Course in Miracles on Zoom. Six months. Six months? And uh -huh. I resisted it, you know, <laughs> because I'm not computer savvy. And here I am using my husband's computer. And anything goes wrong, it, it's like the world to send it. So, you know, <laughs> what do I do now? So talk about resistance. But I'm grateful because, you know, it's, it's, it's going on. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank God you. for Zoom so we can stay in touch with one another, have been able to anyway. Okay, well, there are some suggestions for uh, practices here. <clears throat> Do something this week that nourishes your spiritual life, your intellectual life, your emotional life, and your physical life. So I'm bringing in my weights tomorrow, Kathy and Mac. Oh, not tomorrow, next week. I'm bringing in my oh, weights. We're gonna weights. we're gonna do a little workout. Oh. <laughs> um, can we do that on Zoom? Just kidding. But think about that. The assignment is do something that nourishes you, spirit, soul, and body. And then if you notice, uh, number two, notice yourself thinking or speaking in a resistant way. Pause, pray, and give it to God and turn your focus to something positive. Okay. Are we any any final comments before we pray out? I I was just going to say I gave you a sheet of paper and I have copies for people who want. But this um, I picked up over the internet, but it was just so um, <coughs> beautiful that if anyone wants a copy of it. Well, let's read it now. Okay. I'll, re I'll read it to you. Yeah. Um, Darlene brought this in. She found it on, on the internet. Is that right? Yeah, it was sent to me. Okay. <clears throat> it says, sometimes I just want to stop all the talk of COVID, protests, looting, brutality, and hate. I feel I am losing my way, and I have become convinced that this new normal is real life. But then I met an 87-year-old man who talks of living through polio, diphtheria, Vietnam protests, and is still enchanted with life. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Love it. He seems surprised when I say that 2020 must be especially challenging for him. No, he said slowly, looking me straight in the eyes. I learned a long time ago to not see the world through the printed headlines, internet, or TV. I see the world through the people that surround me. I see the world with the realization that we love big. Mm. Therefore, I choose to write my own headlines. Husband loves wife today. Oh. Family drops everything to come to grandma's bedside. He then patted my hand and said, old man makes a new friend. Oh. It's gonna make me cry. Yeah. Oh, his words collide with my worries, freeing them from the tether I have been holding tight. They float away and I am left with a renewed spirit. My headline now reads, woman overwhelmed by the spiritual kindness and the reminder that our capacity to love is never ending. What a perfect close, darling. Thank you. And his own headlines. Go in that. peace to love and serve your God. See you next Wednesday. Thank you. See you Sunday. See you Sunday. Yay. I'll be there. That's right. It's Wednesday already. Yeah. <laughs> you closing with a prayer? Yes, we're going to close with a prayer. <clears throat> oh, God, thank you for all of the beautiful thoughts that everyone has shared with their beautiful spirit, blessing all of us, moving across this time together with stardust and sunshine and uh, beautiful seasoning for our day. And so we go into the rest of our day with a sense of enthusiasm, excitement, and expectancy. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna hear an amen. 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 amen.